Welcome back to the second of a two-part series on factoring cubic trinomials. I've called this one beast mode because uh, we're going to go through some that are a little bit more difficult than the entry-level cubic trinomials. One of the things that you may consider when you are looking at examples like this and you're trying to factor something, or maybe you're trying to solve for x, is why would I try to factor this if I could just use synthetic division or rational roots uh, theorem for it. And I, I think in certain cases uh, you would be prudent to do that. But here's an example where you might be better off using the method that I have shown in um, the first video. So as you recall, we write the 3x cubed here. We're going to break the 37 into two parts, and then we're going to put a 30 over on the other side. And keep in mind that the difference of squares is going to occur on uh, the left side. So keep in mind here that this number 3 is a bit of a pain because it, it shouldn't be there. Well, I mean, it could be there, but the problem is it's not part of a difference of squares. So at some point, we're going to have to factor out a 3x and be left with the difference of squares in this location. So anticipating that, I'm going to think about numbers that might work there. Uh, difference of squares would be x squared minus 1, x squared minus 4, x squared minus 9, etc. in this case. If I multiply those by 3, because I would have to factor that 3 out, I would get 27 or 12. And I see 27 seems to work really well with this 37, because when I factor that out at 3x, I'll get x squared minus 9, which is my perfect difference of squares, but also because this becomes a minus 10x here, which fits very well in the second half. So. Factoring out the negative 10 gives me an x plus 3. And all you have to do is make sure that the x plus 3 is one of the factors in your difference of squares on the other side. So that one wasn't too bad because we just anticipate that with that 3. So let's finish this problem out. In this case, once again, 3x, x minus 3, x plus 3, minus 10, and the quantity x plus 3. All right. We see the common term, factor that out, x plus 3. And then if it's all right, I'm going to multiply these terms together before bringing them into the quantity remaining, 3x squared minus 9x minus 10. And as I've mentioned in earlier problems, you'd want to definitely check to make sure uh, that that second trinomial is non-factorable. And in this case, uh, that looks to be the case. But let's just double check it to be sure. I'm going to write down 3 and then 10. I'm going to use the prime factor method, which came from the earlier parts of this video. And by inspection, I can see that it does look like we will not generate a 9 in the middle. Because keep in mind, in this case of prime factoring, you'd have to separate your 2s. There's really only one 2 in there anyway, but there are no combinations that will produce a 9 with those prime factors. All right, let's move on to the next step, which is this problem here. What a fun little example. We have a 3x cubed again. This time we've got a 4x squared, and we know that the difference of squares is going to happen on the right side. But notice how the difference of squares is already there. If you just wrote plus 4x squared, you might say, oh, I have a difference of squares. But then what are you going to put over here? And so you'll be in a little bit of a problem because you won't have any place to go. So once again, let's just inspect what are some possibilities? You could have x squared minus 1, x squared minus um, 4. But you see how this one right away wouldn't work with the 25, since it's got to happen on that side. So we really only have a few things, something like this. But don't forget you have this one as well, 4x squared minus 25, 9x squared minus 25. So all of these are possibilities, but let's see what would happen uh, in the case that we just experiment very briefly. For example, make it a plus x squared and a plus 3x squared. We can automatically see that here, if we factor out the 3x squared, we'll get an x plus 1, and that is not going to be a factor of the difference of squares on the other side. So let's just back this all up. We see that is not going to work, but here's the clue. This last one that I've mentioned has a 9 here, and we know that 3x minus 5 is a factor of that. 
and I've got a 3x cubed as my leading term. So let's give this a try. Let's put a plus 9x squared minus 5x squared. And you see that by anticipating and maybe making a, a brief list of possible difference of squares, we see some possibilities here. In this case, we're going to factor out the x squared. We're left with 3x minus 5 plus in this problem, I'm going to go ahead and factor the difference of squares right away. 3x minus 5, 3x plus 5, and then factor out my 3x minus 5. And I'm left with x squared plus 3x plus 5, which is non-factorable. Now, I want to point out that in this particular example, if you use synthetic division, you might take quite a while to determine that 5 thirds is the actual value that would work in synthetic division. You do a lot of trial and error there before you can isolate that one example. All right, but prime factor method is always handy uh, because of the fact that there are so few possible choices here when you're trying to create difference of squares. I hope this is helpful. I may post a third video for um, even more complicated ones, but I think this suffices for difference uh, excuse me, for cubic trinomials.